We will make more notable and substantive progress toward achieving well-rounded human development and common prosperity for all. Common prosperity, it's the new buzz phrase in Beijing. Many of the policy changes rolled out by the Communist Party of late could be lumped in under the common prosperity theme, including regulatory crackdowns that have upended markets. The phrase has been around since the Mao Zedong days to reflect the pursuit of a more egalitarian society. But it fell out of use under Deng Xiaoping during the 1980s, when the directives shifted to make it okay for some people to get rich first. Common prosperity could come later. But as China grew rich, the wealth gap widened significantly. China's richest 20% now earn more than 10 times the poorest 20%. Ahead of its 100th birthday in July, the Communist Party declared it had at long last created a moderately prosperous society. That opened the door for Xi to pursue common prosperity as a new guiding principle using policy, markets, and philanthropy to address the country's income discrepancies. Few sectors where the government sees inequality or disorderly capital expansion have gone unscathed. From education and health care to ride-hailing and food delivery, from property and finance to online gaming and other entertainment. And China's top court says the pervasive practice of excessive overtime known as 996, or working from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., six days a week, may be illegal. Many of China's higher-profile executives and companies are heeding Xi's call, pledging billions to the greater good. It all begs the question, though, how far will the Common Prosperity campaign go, and at what cost? Economists say the pace and intensity of reform must be weighed against a COVID-weary economy that's weakening faster than expected.